About a couple hours ago, I watched with interest in TV that the Supreme Court had sent the convicts in the Bilkis Banu's case to complete their sentence in Gujarat jails. I think the Supreme Court of India had saved the honor of the country. But I must also confess that some of the well-meaning intellectuals of the country who are very active participants in the justice delivery system had been complaining and articulating that unfortunately the present Supreme Court is going back to the emergency days. You know, they have been approving everything what the executive had been wanting. I thought that this judgment makes it pretty clear that Supreme Court cannot be going back to its emergency days. The reason why the critics of the Supreme Court had been so vocal was, number one, in Ayodhya judgment, the court gave an unanimous judgment and it was a common judgment. The individual judges have not given their opinion. This is an abdication of duty and there had been two illegal acts. First, the induction of Ram Lala in Ayodhya and the next demolition of the Babri Janma Bhumi and third, the legislation by the Union Parliament. In view of that, they felt that, you know, Supreme Court should not have given its approval and allowed the government to make a legislation or the parties to arrive at a dispute, etc., etc. But I think I have no comments on that for the simple reason this is time for national healing and reconciliation. Okay, if that has been a dispute that has been festering for more than three centuries, Supreme Court in its wisdom, after uh, about 50 years of launching the original case, came up with a judgment which I think is not too bad and I will not get into it due to the very sensitive uh, nature of the dispute concerned. The second case was the repeal of Article 370. Once again, the Supreme Court has unanimously held that the repeal of 370 is justified. But even critics like uh, Pauli Nariman, who are uh, well-meaning intellectuals uh, whose uh, legal acumen cannot be so easily faulted, have said that the Supreme Court ought not to have done it uh, through a presidential ordinance. They ought to have adopted the article, uh, the regular powers of amendment of the Constitution, which means they ought to have taken the concurrence or at least consulted the state legislature, etc. But again, even Pauli Nariman had said that, you know, rightly or wrongly, Supreme Court has said it, now this is law, and Article 370 repeal is right. And the sense, even if it is not right, it is enforceable. That's what Honorable Pauli Nariman had said. The third case is, the Adani episode. Well, I am no great fan of any capitalist entrepreneur in India. But at the same time, uh, I should say that the Western investigators, hedge funds, and a lot of other actors, you know that these people propped up Enron, these very people who are responsible for what I call reports like Hindenburg. Enron also fell down, we must remember that. And there are what I call as these shark capitalists, okay, exploitative capitalists who manipulate market and the American system are better equipped to expose these uh, capitalist sharks and if they had said something, and if they back it with a credible proof, and challenge the uh, aggrieved people, in this case the Adani group, to file a case against them in United States, if they dare, the company concerned very wisely chose not to do it, because, you know, 
there would be a lot of explanation and there will be very elaborate procedures for discovery and interrogation in U.S. courts and CB and they decided that they should not do it. Instead, the Supreme Court allowed the CB to continue with its probe and give a report within a time. And I have noticed that, you know, just because the Supreme Court gives a timeline doesn't mean the executive or the government organization in charge of completing the investigation completed. They take their own time. See, this is the real problem is, you know, the Supreme Court in India has got no enforcement powers. And one more problem, as I see in the Indian jurisprudence, which I think we have to appreciate, that it is very difficult to make the union executive to comply with an order when it is dead set on not complying with them. And uh, this is what exactly happened in the recent uh, Delhi fiasco of the chief secretary being appointed by the union government despite the Supreme Court uh, warning and the pronouncement that the procedure they thought of doing is illegal. So the problem is the Supreme Court is under pressure. Even if it passes some order, it will know that the union government will disregard it. The other option is to use its contempt powers. When it uses its contempt powers, uh, well, the politician concerned may become a hero. God knows what will happen to the judge who passed the contempt order and many people, you know, particularly in the Supreme Court or High Court, you know, make a lot of noises about it. But as a person who has been obtaining orders and unable to implement them to ensure its compliance is a very big deal. And even under CPZ, I know as a litigant that it's easy to get a judgment, but it is impossible to get it implemented to the satisfaction of the decree holder and therefore you know in Adani case well people thought that the Indian investors have been let down and uh, an entrepreneur or the industrial house which is in good books with the ruling dispensation can get away with the consequences of their blatant violations of law. A lot of people have been talking about it. Once again, I am not a securities expert. So therefore, I refrain my comments on it. I will wait for the CB report, which I think will come in another three months. That's the time given by the Supreme Court. But I am fairly sure that CB is not going to comply with the Supreme Court's direction so easily. See, this was what exactly happened in Pegagas also. You, we all know that the security of uh, the right to privacy was violated when the Union of India authorized uh, the employment of Pegagas. Supreme Court asked them to file an affidavit, which is the instrumentality of the government who placed the order. How many people's telephones were intercepted? In fact, even I downloaded that software. I mean, it was a wallet. Anyway, that's again unimportant. Security was compromised. And the Supreme Court appointed a committee headed by a retired Supreme Court, assisted by the best of brains from IIT and things like that. And nothing again has really come. So people had been fairly vocal, critical. Sometimes it is justified also that uh, the Supreme Court uh, turns a Nelson's eye or a blind eye to the executive excesses, reminding us of the emergency days. Okay, this is the prefix or preamble to my talk. But now, Honorable Supreme Court of India, under uh, the bench having Madam Justice Nagaratna had uh, reversed uh, its own earlier order in exercise of review petition and had given about 15 days for all the accused to surrender. This is one of the best things actually when people are almost uh, losing hope 
What if the Supreme Court as an institution fails? Well, I'm not saying Supreme Court is also a human institution comprising of lawyers, judges. Therefore, you know, like any other human being, any other human institutions having its imperfections, Supreme Court also has its imperfections. And recently, Honorable Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaul, uh, pre prayer to him, Justice Chalameshwar have uh, expressed that uh, the Supreme Court ought not to have struck down the Judicial Accountability Bill and the another bill for appoint Judicial Accountability Act passed by the Parliament. Anyway, that's a digression. So Supreme Court can make mistakes and it does. We have to recognize that. After all, it's a human institution and this is a free country. Everybody is entitled for an opinion. Even a not so accomplished lawyer, law teacher, researcher like me can say Supreme Court is long. So long as I don't attribute any personal motives to the judgment. So therefore we are all entitled for an opinion. And the Supreme Court itself, if you had seen in Sankari Prasad case, it said one thing, said that uh, uh, constitutional amendment is law. In Sajjan Singh's case, it said, no, 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 it is not law. Uh, it stands on its own and it has its power. In Minerva Mill case and Keshavan and the Bharati case, they said that uh, the parliament's power to amend, so parliament's power to amend the constitution should not violate the basic structure of the constitution. Now people are talking that the basic structure of the constitution itself is a flawed uh, doctrine. It needs to be revisited and this is a continuous ongoing debate. You know, I have uh, no problems with that and uh, if I feel that the Supreme Court is wrong, so long as I am allowed to articulate that it is wrong, it is a nice and fine development and that's the end of it actually. Now, the Supreme Court has said this and it has uh, remanded the matter back to the Maharashtra High Court for consideration of the remission. This case was investigated by CBI. So Maharashtra government has to consult CBI. We all know that CBI functions under the Ministry of Personal Union of India. I'm not too sure what decision that CBI will take. CBI can take an independent decision the way Tamil Nadu Vigilance, Anti Vigilance and Anti-Corruption Bureau did in the recently concluded case against Tupanmudi, they may take a view, they may put forward arguments in court that are contrary to the stated position of the state executive. But I am not very sure that uh, whether CBI lawyers will take as much of a bold stance as these Vigilance and Anti-Corruption Bureau lawyers of Tamil Nadu did in Madras High Court against uh, Mr. Ponmudi, the ruling cabinet minister. So that's a very nice development and uh, we have to wait and see how Maharashtra High Court is going to decide that. Now let me assume the worst thing. See, now Maharashtra government is uh, ruled by a BJP executive or a coalition wherein BJP is the most dominant partner. That's the reality actually. Okay. So they may take the same view as the Gujarat government. Or if the Maharashtra government pushes the ball to the court of the CBA and CBA in its wisdom chooses to consult Home Ministry. All of it is perfectly right and legitimate and it represents a due process. Probably they may arrive at the same decision as that of the Gujarat High Court and the remitting authorities. Well, I think it is not a, what I call. It's not something that you can rule it out. It can happen. They can take the same thing. But the best part here is the Supreme Court has also directed that all principles of natural justice will have to be complied with. Which means that they must consult uh, Madam Bilkis Banu. I'm sorry that it happened to you, lady. You have suffered grave injustice. 
it the original incident ought not to have happened it happened but mercifully the people have been convicted and sent to jail they served their sentence they served 14 years happy it's not too bad you know they didn't get away with that but i still think that uh, remission is wrong even if they had to grant the remission they ought to have consulted you they didn't do it and i'm glad that there are a lot of public spirited citizens like subhashini ali aparna bhat mahua mehra and i'm sure a lot of others have taken the matter uh, and the former vice chancellor uh, from uttar pradesh all have taken the matter in the supreme court saying that the remission ought not to have granted and uh, i am happy that great injustice uh, had been rectified now but at the same time i can't but wonder why the convicts and under trials held in tamil nadu prisons okay who have served very long sentences and who has been recommended to be released okay either you release them on parole or you release them on bail that's what the tamil nadu legislature and executive have done and the governor doesn't decide it and thereafter keeping it pending for more than 2 years in a very grandiose and eloquent way says that i have decided by sending the matter to the honi and home ministry now what what is the real test for the bjp government and the bjp executive and the bjp parliament today is how quickly you are going to dispose of this pending remission application of the convicts of the bilkis banu case now if you are going to be faster in consideration probably after new process of law and complying with the formalities you may once again release them i mean i don't rule that out it can happen but the supreme court and that again will be a matter for judicial review by the supreme court and i am fairly sure for about a couple of years at least these guys are not going to see the light of the day maharashtra government cbi central government bilkis banu all these people have to be heard and any one of the people who is going to be aggrieved can reach the supreme court and uh, i'm sure that uh, the convicts have to fight lots more okay for them to get away from the consequences of the case but the real problem is why such alacrity is not shown to the muslim convicts in tamil nadu almost all parties ruling parties in tamil nadu admk dmk have said that the other parties you know have said that these people must be released okay well let us remember that earlier in rajiv gandhi assassination the convicts uh, have served about 27 years of sentence okay and uh, they were released uh, so easily even when the madras high court and the state legislature and the executive orders the release the union government uh, goes to the supreme court and gets it stayed and the matter remained pending for about a year or so or more so i think that uh, there are still questions okay but uh, i think uh, that the judgment of the supreme court is a silver lining in the dark horizon we warmly welcome it and uh, pronounce and respectful what i call respectful uh, admiration to the supreme court of india as i would say thank you but criminal law particularly the right to fair trial is a very important thing and there is not uh, much of uh, understanding even amongst the legal fraternity i have put up some courses on udemy i am giving a link to the enrollment of those courses even those who don't practice criminal law let us understand the concept of fair trial and the right to fair trial exists even after the conviction stage 
and uh, there also the state should protect the rights of the victims okay madam bilkis panu we are sorry that it happened to you but i am glad that the system is alive to get you a semblance of justice thank you very much